Before we begin today's video, I'd like to encourage all of you Daisy server owners to come join my Discord if you really want to take your server to the next level. You'll find everything from the basic XML guides to definitions, some really good JSON builds, proxy builds along with advanced XML. The link to join my Discord will be on all of my YouTube videos. See you guys there. Hello YouTube and welcome back to another video on my channel. In today's video, we're going to be covering the basics of owning a DAISY server. So if you've just rented your DAISY server console, uh, either PlayStation or Xbox, then this video is uh, the right video for you to watch. So the very first thing you're going to see if you've rented the server is uh, on your Nitrato is the game server just as you see mine right now but obviously if you have one it's just going to be one so the very first thing you want to do is go to the web interface of that server but when you buy the server you need to give it some time to initialize so nitrato will show you that notification that you just have to wait a little normally you just want to give it like 10 to 20 minutes for it to fully set up. Um, so the very first thing on this, which is the general settings, this is really important. This is where you're gonna name your server. This is where you're gonna find your server in game. So if you don't name it, it's gonna be the Nitrato host name, which is gonna be very hard to find your server unless you know the IP and so on. So the very best way is to get to general settings first. Missions is where um, you choose your server's map. So you have two options here for console. The very first one is Chernoris Plus. The second one is the DLC Livonia. So if you want to go with Chernoris, then just uh, leave it on Chernoris. If you'd rather go with Livonia, then make your pick here. The host name is what you'd like your server to be called. For instance, uh, over here I have it, the long road. Uh, a password, if you'd like the server to be passworded just until you can figure everything out and get started and just test some stuff out, then add a password. If not, you can just leave it blank. The server time multiplayer, uh, day and night, if this is too confusing for you, on my Discord, by the way, my Discord's link is going to be in the description of all of my videos. So on my Discord, you want to get to tools, uh, day and night calculator. Once you pull this up, this is where you're gonna, for example, get the right values. So if you want to do full game day in hours, so if you want the day to be three hours long, and then your nights to say be 30 minutes long, do the calculation, and it'll tell you to put number four on your server time acceleration and nighttime acceleration 6.0. Use system time and persistent server time. I don't recommend touching these at all. You want to leave these settings exactly as is. Deactivating third person means your server is going to be first person only. Deactivating the crosshair that you get on your screen can also be done here. Reduce log output if you have a server that is say PVP only and you don't have any kill feed bots or whatever then it's a good option to have this on. But if you have a kill feed bot and you're running a faction server, then you wanna make sure this is unticked because so what this does is this uh, will tell the server to not save every action like uh, in your logs, in your server logs. Uh, like a lot of the actions are gonna be missing. Instead, it'll focus on the server's performance. Resetting missions.xml can be done here, but what this will do for you is mission.xml means your server's files. So if you check this, save changes and restart your server, you will lose all of your server files. So this is only a good thing to do if you want to just have a fresh start with your files. If you've gone wrong somewhere, this is what you want to do. Log damage means it'll save the damage done to players. So for instance, kills and so on are going to be saved in your uh, 
log files. So logging placement is, for example, traps, tents, log base building, um, as in players building bases. Logging player list will show you their position, where the players are, and who's online, and so on. The night lighting, um, so this is kind of tricky. This will only work if you don't have CFG gameplay enabled. Um, so if you have this disabled, then sure, you can make your night darker here. But if you have CFG gameplay enabled, then this needs to be done in file browser, which I will do another video for later. Personal light um, basically uh, is the same thing. The light and config altogether. If you have enable CFG gameplay on, this setting will not mean anything. So this is that personal light every player will get during night where they can see clearly within like a meter or two. Ban list, so if you want to ban somebody, you can just put their username here. For example, just put a space and you want to ban me, just put my username, then space. Okay? And then put the next username, then space again, put the next username, and so on. But do keep in mind, it is case sensitive, so you want to make sure you get the exact username. Mouse and keyboard, uh, if you want to enable it on your server, this is the setting for it. Activating whitelist can also be done here. Once this is checked and you'd like players whitelisted, it's the same thing as the ban list. So you want to put Amid, Popal, for example, then space, uh, whatever, you know, then whatever. You just put spaces. And then your server will recognize it. Prioritizing players, uh, a lot of people have a misunderstanding that this kind of means something like admin powers and so on, but no. This is only to prioritize on a queue. So if, if your server is really busy and you have a queue of 10 people and then you try and connect as a prioritized player, what will happen is it will push you to the first in the queue. Uh, so that's that for, and it works exactly like the whitelist and the bounce. Disabling base damage can be done here by checking this, but then again, if you have enable CFG gameplay, this will not matter here. So if you look at the CFG gameplay.json, it'll say, turn on this setting to enable the usage of the CFG gameplay.json config file. Enabling this will overwrite the following server configurations. Disable base damage, disable container damage, disable respawn dialog, disable personal light, and lighting config. So if you check this, whatever you do to these will not register. Instead, you're going to have to do these settings in the file browser. Disable the multi-account thingy, which was introduced with 1.21. So if you have an alt and you'd like to like keep switching alts, it gives you like a penalty login time. If you'd like that disabled, then check this value, save changes, and restart your server. Uh, the very last thing on the general settings is the performance uh, values. I personally do not recommend messing with these at all. You want to make sure they stay exactly the same because these are the best settings uh, for your console server. Now if you have say extreme PvP server whatever and you'd like your uh, distance and so on reduced or default object view distance lowered, you know, you can mess with these. They're very self-explanatory. Every uh, setting has its own description under it, so it shouldn't be too complicated. That is all for today's video. I'm planning on making this a series because I've seen a lot of changes have happened to Daisy servers uh, settings since my last videos. So I'm going to be slowly updating all of those. Do let me know down in the comments uh, section what you think I should uh, be uploading more about or speaking more about or teaching more about on my YouTube channel. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. See you guys in the next video.